Hello, I'm Justin Shirley, and today I'll be talking to you about an ethical dilemma that occurred in an engineering setting just over two years ago. So I want everybody to sit back and think about whether you've had a job before or you're at a new job and you're on a road trip or you're in a meeting and you're working long hours and you're with your manager or boss and you think that they're having an inappropriate relationship with uh, one of their subordinates, one of your coworkers, your peers. What do you do? Do you go up and say something to them directly? Do you bring it up to their superior, their manager? Or do you not do anything at all? Do you do something completely different? Um, well, this is the exact scenario that multiple employees were faced at one of the largest defense contractors in the United States just over two years ago. So, who is this guy? This guy is uh, Christopher Kubasek, and he was going to be the uh, CEO for Lockheed Martin um, in 2012, beginning 2013. He was the co or vice chairman, and he was uh, the chief operating officer before that. Um, so, what did he do? He had an inappropriate relationship with someone, uh, one of his subordinates. Uh, so, the case doesn't get into a lot of details of what the details of those relationships were, mainly because it wasn't a legal case. It was handled by Lockheed Martin, and we'll get into that. Uh, but uh, so the details aren't really presented. It's, this will focus more on the, the handling of the case by Lockheed Martin. So um, you don't really know whether he crossed a, a moral or ethical boundary and he clearly overstepped that, that guideline or that uh, ethical line, or did he, were, were there a lot of gray areas involved? You know, that's what we talked about is sometimes it's normally not clearly define what uh, those actions, whether they were right or wrong. So um, we don't have those details present, so like I said, I'll be focusing more on the uh, how Lockheed Martin handled it. So think about that situation I brought up initially. How would you handle it? Well, Lockheed Martin, and um, speaking from experience working at, for another defense contractor, they they spend a lot of money training their employees on uh, the ethical way to handle situations. They, they spend a lot of resources making sure that if an ethical dilemma happens, you have the resources at your fingertips to handle that dilemma um, properly and make sure that gets resolved in the correct manner. And one of those ways is having an ethical committee where you can have a hotline, you, you have websites, uh, emails that you can send to people to answer your questions. If you just have a question about how to handle something or whether you have a complaint about someone directly, they have these committees that handle those kind of situations. And um, so those employees, that's how they handle it. They, they submitted these uh, complaints to the ethical committee and that grabbed Lockheed Martin's attention that when, hey, we have this guy that's gonna be leading our organization, we need to make sure he stands for everything that we stand for, that he walks the talk that, that our organization uh, preaches, that our leader actually has those uh, values and those morals those uh, and follows those ethical guidelines that we want. And so he had these uh, pending uh, requests out there, or complaints out there about him, and they investigated it. They hired an external firm, an independent firm, to, to perform this investigation and compile the results. And uh, one interesting note here, this so the results of that investigation actually occurred uh, on the exact same day, less than 30 minutes after David Petraeus, um, the leader of the CIA, after he did, uh, after he retired as well because of an extra marital affair. So what was the outcome of this? Well, he, he lost his job. He didn't become CEO, but um, Lockheed Martin replaced him quickly. Uh, they, they announced he was resigned or he, he was resigning and the board had requested that his, res his resignation, uh, they requested that he was replaced by Marilyn Houston. And um, you see in this, this is a picture of Lockheed Martin stocks, and the red arrow is actually when the uh, the incident occurred. Um, and Marilyn Houston and um, Chris Kub Kubizic actually had very different perspectives on how they wanted to lead that company and how they wanted to uh, proceed with Lockheed Martin going forward. And you can see by the the stocks of Lockheed Martin that they they've grown considerably, and so it's really worked out well for them. So. Um, you know, Lockheed Martin hadn't been so focused on the ethical side of their leader, um, you know, would, would they have this kind of success? That's 
it's kind of up for in the air, but it's a good sign that, hey, you know, you take care of your leaders and make sure that they stand for the ethics that you want them to, and you can have that success. You can get over that, uh, that ethical dilemma, get past it, and grow s substantially. So the conclusion of this is Lockheed Martin handled it well. They, they were swift. They came out to the press. They said, hey, this is what's happening, but we're replacing them. We found out, and we're moving on. And the press moved on, too. And obviously, their stock price moved on. And uh, as a leader in an organization, you need to hold yourself to the same ethical guidelines and uh, those, those principles and morals that your organization wants, wants to hold everybody else to. So as a leader, you need to walk the talk and make sure that uh, – you stand for the right things so that your organization stands for. And that's all I ask for you guys to, to be in that position next time. Think of all the different resources you have at your disposal, whether you just simply went up and talking to them or going to an ethical uh, committee. You, you have a lot of options, and you need to be able to walk the talk that your organization stands for. Thank you.